Now they can hear us. The now they can hear us. One. All right, we Over had this under one. control. Perfect. Yeah, oh. we're batting a thousand tonight. Anyway, welcome to Wednesday Night Fly Time here at the Northern Angler, everyone. Thanks for welcome, tuning welcome. in. Welcome, Big time. Uh, beautiful sunset tonight. Did you guys see that? Yeah. It turned pink. It was great. It was awesome. It was cold today. Let's be honest. Super cold. Uh, I think everybody's uh, in the middle of winter here in Northern Michigan, and, and we actually have a, a very mild winter going so far, and... We're fortunate to have that. So we are, yeah. But you know what? We're even more fortunate to have is Evan Vasuri in the house. Evan, let's uh, Evan uh, let's turn Evan's camera on. All right, All right. there You're we excited. go, Evan. Man, it's been a while, dude, since uh, you know we yeah, got to all to hang out in, uh, and uh, check be out in the shop and uh, see all the boys today. It's all good, all right? Good stuff, right? It feels like old times. It's super yeah. awesome. A few things before we get started. Uh, if you're new to this, welcome. Uh, we appreciate you tuning in. Tonight we're tying dries, emergers kind of things, uh, specifically <clears throat> focused for Midwest anglers, and that's really what this channel is kind of all about. So welcome. If you want to participate in the chat and you're on your phone, you do need the app. That is really important. Uh, and use that chat window. We monitor it throughout, uh, and we'll be throwing up some questions for Evan after he ties each fly and he's happy to go through steps and and talk about materials and fishing these flies and things like that that's what i love about doing these is having everyone's brain to pick it's not Absolutely. just no hey, i mean here's yeah. a, fly. a little back it's and like, forth yeah right? yeah throw exactly. it in the blender we'll quite honestly right matt that's what sure. we've seen here um in our feedback it's really with doing yeah. these yeah i mean this thing's growing it's it's taken off you know this was something that we tried to do to 
you know, say, hey, we can't do our flies at the Franklin. We can't do our normal programs. Let's put this out there. So this has been super, super awesome. Yep. And thanks for all the support, everyone. Big we can't time. thank you enough. I'm really excited. You know, dry flies aren't sexy as much, right? You know, like Not everybody's like, oh, you know, I got this like badass streamer and I have this and that. And, you know, like, but day in, day out in Michigan, if you can tie a fly like, you know, Evan here can tie a fly, you know, another really great uh, dry fly tire out there, um, you know, Jerry Reagan, something like that. Like, I think Evan's like the younger, you know, generation of kind of that, like, let's make this work. What what are the fish looking up to and, right. and how can I catch more fish yeah. in my boat? <clears throat> it's I love the spring here in Michigan. And this is, you know, I, I, it's not enough people do the dry fly thing anymore. And I think it's it's I hope it's not a dying art. Oh, um, I hope not. You know, it was fun to have Corey last week yeah. with the, uh, wet, with the flies, wet flies, which is you super You can go classic. back and watch those videos, by the way. That's why we do this on YouTube, so you can go back later and rewatch it and tie. We don't expect everyone to keep up with us. I mean, right? How moving. can we're right. tying right. three hour, three flies in an hour? No, but this is this is really nice to be able to go back. And we appreciate materials. everyone's materials orders. This has yeah. been great for the shop. So thanks really, for shopping really small, help help now. And so. Yep. Yeah, we're ready to rock and roll. We tonight. talked about the format. Uh, if you haven't done so yet, think about subscribing, hitting that notification bell. Every time we put out a new video, you will be notified. And give us a thumbs up if you like it. That helps us out, helps other people find these videos as well. Uh, puff question for Evan first. Uh, tell us about you as a guide. Yeah, so I've been, uh, I moved up here in 2009. Uh, I met Brian in the fly shop, the old Northern Angler, and uh, been kind of guiding and got hooked up with him. It's been uh, almost 10 years now, 10, 11 years. Uh, yeah, going so, on. So, um, yeah, fly tying wise, I've been guiding with Brian and tying flies and fishing these kind of upper Midwest rivers, um, Manistee mostly, Osabo, a lot of the other smaller rivers around the area. Um, since I was a kid, but a lot uh, really focused on the last 10 years as uh, doing it professionally and uh, certainly on the side uh, fishing wise. So I'm just going to bring a couple. I got two or three flies we'll go over um, tonight, depending on time, but stuff that works for me. Um, my fly tying is certainly not, uh, I wouldn't call it groundbreaking by any means. Um, it's, it, you know, I take a lot of ideas and um themes from other uh certainly more uh renowned tires and like i'll kind of tweak them for what works for me so that's why i tie flies uh it's so i can get exactly what i want to a particular fish or a particular river as far as blending colors and stuff but uh as far as the platforms of flies uh a lot of this is kind of old school stuff mixed with a little new school stuff so uh, kind of blending those two together and uh, for what works for you. So uh, we can probably go ahead and get started. Are you guys ready? We'll, We're we'll ready. start with Sounds just kind good. of a standard right uh, we'll kind of standard dry fly here. Um, I like this one. Um, it's going to be a little bit of a, you know, kind of Isonychia pattern. We fish these a lot on the Manistee. It's probably one of the, the most prolonged hatches that we have in the summertime. I would say they'll start anywhere mid-June, and, and you can kind of fish these all summer, I would say. Then certainly uh, in the dusk, evening hours, and kind of throughout the day, just blind fish them as well. So uh, we'll start out with the hook. Um, I've got an A-Rex FW570, which just is uh, kind of a standard dry fly hook. It's a little stouter than a normal dry fly hook, and it's a, just a tick longer so these have a, a little bit longer body. Uh, I'll start with the size 12. You can certainly tie these in a 10, uh, 12, sometimes a 14. And again, just speaking to that platform, you can tie the same fly and kind of change the, uh, the colors or the size to imitate a lot of the different hatches that we have in the area. Like I'll tie these down to like a 16 or a 14 and for a sulfur. Um, you can maybe mess with the blueing olive, certainly the isonychia is maybe a, a little bit bigger, uh, for a brown drake even. Um, <clears throat> so we got the hook and the vise here. We're going to use just a uni kind of standard six ot thread. Uh, this is a wine color, so it's kind of a burgundy. You could use a black or a gray would work based on what kind of body you're matching up. Um, so the first thing we're going to do, we'll start just with the thread right behind the eye here. And we're going to start with the thread base. And kind of real easy to wrap it back maybe 
kind of halfway to the point. And a lot of the things we're going to do with, you know, any kind of dry fly you tie is, is a lot of spacing, right? So uh, we want to make sure the first step we're going to do is put in the post here. So we're going to come halfway back, and then we're going to come back halfway to the eye, and that'll be about our kind of two-thirds point <clears throat> for the hook here. And the first thing we're going to do here, uh, just again to help with that spacing, is tie in our, our post, our parachute post. And for that, I have uh, EP fibers. So you can use any kind of EP fibers. They make, uh, this one's a little, excuse me, wispier and kind of has a little shimmer to it. These are called trigger point fibers. <clears throat> so we'll tie in uh, just a standard white for the win for the post on this. We're going to measure that up. I got a kind of a big hunk tied off of the, the hank here. And if you're going to measure that, it's a healthy pinch. We're going to double this over. So it's, it's about measurement wise from the, the shank of the hook down to the point. And so we'll take that and we're gonna measure that up. Kind of use your left hand here and butt it right up against the bend of the hook. And so those fibers end at the eye. And we're gonna bring that forward, and just do a nice little pinch wrap, maybe one, two, three wraps. And we got all this long material hanging out the back and our desired length here coming out of the front. So we're just gonna bring this forward and use that front for a measurement, clip that right off. Put that to the side for your next fly. So we got a V of material here, our thread's in the middle. We're just gonna ball this up, kind of pull it up forward, do a couple wraps right in front, a couple wraps right behind, and we're gonna start posting this up. So we're gonna wrap kind of behind that post here. And we're just gonna real easy, you can turn your vise helps a little bit here. And we're just going to walk this thread up the post of this dry fly. So the big thing here, if you get spacing too far apart, you'll find that your thread will slide right off the top and it won't hold really good. So you just want to make a couple real touching turn wraps here. And then every two or three, we just want to come in and like give it a good tug. Pull that down so it's nice and tight. And we're just going to walk this material up, make our little post. Every turn that I take with the thread, I'm just kind of preening this fiber up so we're not trapping any of the material. And we'll walk that up just a little bit and then come right back down. Like I said, just want to make sure you lock that in. So you can see there, that's going to be a nice base for the hackle of our fly. We can take a couple in front, a couple in back. Just really lock that down. So this should be, you can kind of move it around, but it should be pretty tight at this point. Any kind of loose, crazy ones we can trim out. We're going to come in, just start working your thread back. We're going to work behind the post now. So what we want to do is add the tail now. So the tail we're going to use for this. Um, you know, you could use, I like moose body hair a lot because it kind of flares out and it's going to give you a little added flotation. Um, you could use like a Coq de Leon would be good. Uh, deer hair is good. Um, but this moose body kind of bang for your bucket holds up over a couple fish and <clears throat> really helps balance out the fly. So we got, I don't know, five or six fibers here just like this. We're going to um, not really toss this in the hair stacker, but just kind of use your hands. I like these little uneven for our tail, so we're just kind of eyeballing that. And we're going to want this to be, you know, roughly from the back of the hook about a shank length here. So we're coming in, we're measuring that up about maybe a touch longer than a shank length, shank and a half. And we'll kind of measure this up here. Any of this extra material will just trim right off come right in so what we want to do is have the butts of this moose body kind of end right at the post and that's going to help with the taper of our fly here we'll walk this back to the bend of the hook so about where the barb is in between the the barb and the gouge of the hook got nice tight wraps coming back so that moose body is bound down really good at this point and what we want to do, because this is a hollow hair, we want to help flare it out on the tail. And that's going to separate all those fibers. It's going to help our dry fly float 
when we're fishing it here. So we want to take our thread, kind of lift this up, come right behind for a wrap, and then pull that forward. And that's going to raise those up and spread them out. We'll do two wraps in front, and that's going to lock that in. So all those tail fibers now are going to spread out. And you can kind of see how they flare for the tail. <clears throat> Next, we're going to talk about the, just the dubbing for the body. It's pretty standard. Um, I like to mix my dubbings together quite a bit. So um, this fly, the Isoniki, is kind of a little, uh, little got red to it, a little gray. I'll use a couple different types of dubbing a lot of times too. Almost uh, never will I take a pack of dubbing and just put it on a hook. Um, I think that's one of the great things about fly time. You kind of mix and match your colors and blend it to what you want. Um, and that, like for me, is a confidence builder too, where I'm, I know that I'm not throwing the same thing as anybody else. If you're the third drift boat down the river or the fifth guy weighing down a run or whatever, you know you have something kind of like a you know an ace up your sleeve right where you know i know i have a fly that nobody else is going to throw just because i made all the took the steps to make it a certain way one little fiber here we'll take care of um so for this fly you can use any kind of just dry fly dubbing uh your standard beaver dubbing works really good high and dry um fine and dry or super fine or whatever um, I'll kind of use that in a red tone for the Isonychia and then what I'm going to do is kind of tone that down with a little bit of uh, rabbit dubbing so the fine and dry floats really well and then the rabbit's going to kind of balance that out where it, it's a little heavier typically you use rabbit dubbing for nymphs uh, it's a little spikier so I like it in dry flies mixed in with uh, a little finer dubbing because you get the spiky effect like a nymph. It's a little buggier looking fly at the end of the day. So what we want to do is we'll take just a little pinch of both colors. Probably two-thirds, one-third, I would say. Uh, and we're going to air like two-thirds to the dry fly. Like how these guys sit at the table over there. They got two-thirds, one-third. Matt always hogs the camera, it looks like. <laughs> Brian's got one-third of the oh, table. Wow. I wish you guys could see that. So, uh, you know, just eyeball it here. Maybe like two-thirds of the red, a third of the gray. And all we're going to do is blend this stubbing together. So we lay it on top of each other and kind of just stack, start stacking it to get the color you want and the consistency that you want. And like I said, sometimes I'll tie this with a little uh, lighter color red like this or a little, if you wanted a darker body one, like this is more of a rusty um, red color. And I'll tie them both ways. And just kind of see what the fish like but we're going to tone that down a little bit with the rabbit and uh, when you dub this on the body you can really see the bugginess of that rabbit kind of stick out stick through so that's good and mixed now it's it's kind of like that red but a little gray and we're going to make a nice little kind of dubbing noodle here So we're working just little itty bitty pinches. Um, back when I used to teach a lot of the fly tying classes, I would always see uh, one of the big problems in particular with dry flies people tend to do is they, they want to add too much dubbing, right? So <clears throat> if you got a little clump like this, you just want to pick out just the littlest amount, right? And so like if it floats around, that's a good amount. If you've got too much and it sinks to the ground, it's you probably got too much and it's not going to twist well around the thread and bind itself to the thread. Uh, one other thing, I, I don't like to use wax here. Some guys will use wax on their thread. The problem with wax is it's really hard to get the dubbing back off. So if you do add too much, um, it's hard to get it back off. But I want a nice, consistent noodle of dubbing, and I'll work in maybe three four inches at a time and then just stop and add more want this to be nice and even and that's going to allow me to build the taper into the fly how i want to build it in instead of trying to add more dubbing at the bottom than on the top um, if it's all consistent you can just take more wraps with your thread so we'll start right at the base of that tail now and just start coming forward so we'll get about halfway and then we'll kind of double it over maybe once or twice basically we're trying to make it look just a little bit bigger as it comes forward 
I'm going to end that right at the post. So you can kind of see how that, I don't know if it comes up on the camera or not, but that red and the gray will kind of blend together almost. As you're wrapping it, it'll it'll kind of separate where if it was just all one solid color, it's going to look more like a blob. And if you ever look at a bug and on the river, if you pick one up, it lands on you. Like they're never just a solid color, right? There's some kind of modeling or, you know, they're toned a little bit differently as they come. So jump right in front of that post now. What we're going to do next is add our hackle so that that's going to be out of the way. Uh, for this fly, this particular bug, the Isonychia is typically, well, almost always will have like a white, really prominent white leg to them. Um, they used to call them the white glove howdy, right? So um, I like to use a grizzly, uh, you know, just a kind of standard whiting. Uh, this is a pro grade uh, grizzly hackle. And I'll tone it down with a little brown a lot of times. Um, and then I'll also tie some with the grizzly and then I have like a dun colored one. So I'll always add two hackles. I think it gives a little fuller profile to the fly. And uh, this fly here is more based on the profile than the actual kind of color. You'll see what we're gonna add next here. But um, so we'll grab just one. You can measure this up too. Uh, I want this hackle to kind of end where the tail starts. So another mistake that a lot of guys make when they start tying dry flies is they'll use a hackle gauge right like this or however and the hackle gauges are great but they're more for a traditional hackled body or a hackled wing on a fly where they're more based off of if you're hackling a fly like this orientation to the uh, point of the hook where we're trying to wrap it to look like legs we want to really overemphasize that so if you do use a hackle gauge on your flies, I'll go one to at least one bigger, probably two sizes bigger. Um, I don't think you can make this big enough, in my opinion. I'll go really heavy on the exaggerate the legs um, because this isn't the wing. A lot of guys think your hackle is the wing of the fly, but really you're talking about the legs of the bug you're trying to imitate. So what we have here is just a grizzly. I'll tie this one with a brown. So I'm going to come into my uh, neck here. And I'm just going to find one that uh, is about the same size. So kind of the same size. A lot of times if you're getting it from the same general area, that's a good marker for the same size hackle. So what we'll do here, I like to put the grizzly on the, on the bottom and we'll kind of tie them in together and then orient them around the um, post like they're one feather. So they get all this fluff on the bottom. We'll come in and cut that right off and then just strip off some of that stem so that's exposed. So we get a nice clean tie-in point to wrap this. We're gonna take these two feathers. We got the curve, the side that's facing down right now. And all we're going to do here is kind of, I got on this near side, so it'll be a little hard to see when I'll push that up against the post. Do a couple wraps, and you can see this little stem here. All I'm going to do, I don't have this super tight, but it's tight enough that it's going to hold in place. I just want to pull this feather back a little bit so that stem's not going to block the eye. And it's still tied in. And that's short enough that you don't even have to come in and really cut it either. So if you're trying to do these in a hurry, um, like a lot of times we are, these are going to, a lot of times they get thrown in the trees and <clears throat> lost a lot of times that way instead of on fish, unfortunately. But I'm trying to tie them pretty quick. Um, we're going to save steps by having to come in, pick up your scissors and trim that out. So we got our two feathers. Again, the grizzlies on the bottom. Got them tied in on the near side, and we're just going to lift this up and we're going to wrap our thread around those two stems and then up the post here. So they're up and out of the way. We're securing those feathers to the post of the fly so that we can wrap them back down the stem coming later. We'll work our thread back down to the bottom. Our feathers are up and out of the way and we have our thread right up against that post. So the next thing I want to put in here is actually a little set of wings. You could do this fly with or without this step. I like to put in um, all of these features of the bug and then 
kind of just let the fish see what they want to see, right? So I have the wing, I have the legs. I'm going to tie in this um, so they could picture it as a spent wing fly later in the evening or I can just throw it during the day. So you're kind of covering two or three different life cycle, sa life cycle stages of the bug all with one fly. And I think the fish kind of pick out like they're going to see what they want to see. So we're going to take this. Uh, this is again, it's just those EP fibers. This is a little different color. It's just a touch darker than the, than the white. Um, it's a gray, it's got white and then a little black mixed in. I think the color is called Quicksilver in the EP fibers. You might want to check that, but. Um, again, we're going to tie in a spent wing here. So we want this wing to be about the length of the shank of the hook. So we have that measured end pinched in our fingers. We're going to take that, pull this wing out of the way, come right in front of that post and just a couple, one, two, three good wraps. And then we'll kind of bend that back out of the way. We want this perpendicular to the hook. So almost like you're tying a, a rag egg for steelhead or any kind of spent wing, rusty spinner. Uh, and then we'll pull this side back and kind of crisscross those wraps. One, two, three. So we have it X on top of the hook. Kind of one long one, one short one. We're going to measure this up and trim it so it's the same length. So that's right in front of our parachute post. And that's locked in place. It's not going anywhere. We can move it out of the way if we want. And we're going to work around it here for the last couple steps. So you guys can see there. Just from the bottom, we're creating that profile so the fish can see it as a spinner, and then we're going to wrap the hackle. They can look at it like a done whatever. Um, like I said, a lot of times you can overthink it, but we're covering, you know, two or three bases at the same time here with one fly, which is what I like. So uh, we got our thread right behind the eye. What we're going to do is add just a little more of our dubbing and kind of cover up our workspace here from underneath, and then I'll show you guys a little different way to uh, finish these flies off. So a little bit of dubbing, make sure that's nice and even. Maybe work half as much as we did for the body because we're just covering up the thorax here. And we're already going to have some uh, bulk built in with the wing. So just a nice thin kind of noodle here. We'll start right behind the eye, do a wrap, maybe two, and then we're going to come Kind of flare those wings out so they're perpendicular to the hook. Come up and across, right in between them, one or two wraps behind. And just check this from the bottom so it's how you want it to look. You just want to make sure you're covering up all those thread wraps. You can move this whole assembly up and out of the way if you need to. A couple wraps behind. And then we're going to finish with our thread on the back side of the post. And we're going to take one wrap with our thread around the actual post here. So right at the base of the post, and we went around this way one time, the same way we're gonna wrap the hackle. And these wings are kinda up and out of the way. Um, one thing that I like to do here to help secure this hackle um, is to add a little bit of glue. This is Z-Mint, Fly Tire Z-Mint, uh, Zappa Gap works really good as well. Um, but this is gonna help you so you can use this fly more than one fish. A lot of times when you're especially buying dry flies the way they're tied is is for speed so they're not taking the time to really make sure this hackles are in there and, and that's a lot of times when you're seeing hackles that you catch a fish or you make a, a a bad cast or whatever and the hackle all blows out so the the fly looks fine but you lose all your hackle and it's no good anymore unless you go back and retie it so this is a little bit of just a tick of glue here we're going to add and i'm going to come in right on the post itself, right on those thread wraps. And I'm just gonna add just a drop right on there. And that's gonna help secure this, these hackles to the, the post. So we'll lift that up. We're gonna take our two hackles and just wrap them down at the same time. You can use hackle pliers if you want, if you got real short, shorter feathers. Maybe one more. I always think the more the better on the hackle, that's gonna help it float. So we're holding that pinched in our left hand. Then we're going to take our thread and just kind of bounce it around and work it right at that base here. Right at the base maybe two or three times. Then we'll just let it hang down that hackle secure. And then we're going to come in and kind of just trim out the extra. A couple clips. Good to go there. Got any crazy ones that are 
facing the wrong way. And then this fly in particular, because there's a whole lot going on right at the eye of the hook, I'm not going to try to jump that thread forward and wet finish it. One little trick you can do is get this fly on the, or your thread on the near side of that hook. And I'm going to take a, just a little bit more of that super glue here. And I'm going to add it right to my thread. So I'm putting the glue on the thread. Kind of nice liberal coat there. And I'm going to take that and I'm going to wrap that glued thread around that parachute post a couple more times. And just let it hang for a second. What that's going to do is that glue is going to sink into that thread. And as you wrap it around, it's going to secure itself to the post. And then you can come back in. You don't even have to tie a knot on the end of this fly because that glue is going to grab it. You can just cut that thread out and you're clear. You're good to go. That fly won't come apart. We'll kind of flare our wings out a little bit there so they look right. So we're just kind of cleaning them up now how we want. Make sure we don't have any little errant fibers with that hackle. And then we'll just trim this wing up if you want. You can leave it a little longer if you want. If you're fishing it later in the evening. Well, that's pretty good. You can kind of see at the bottom now how um, that's going to look compared to just your standard dry. You can see that little extra step we took adding that wing in there is going to really create that profile of the spent wing isonychia here. So like I said, you can do this fly with that step or without that step, just a hackled parachute, and you're good to go. Uh, this is probably, I would say, any time, kind of the second week in June on, this is probably my top producing fly, just kind of blind fishing it down the river after 5 o'clock in the afternoon kind of deal, until dark. If they're hatching or not, the fish are looking for them. Um, just a really kind of easy, standard, extra step with that wing but uh like i said that helps the fish kind of see give them a different look anyway than just a standard dry fly so that's just a little ice and icky there that's the first one and uh i'll be the first to ask this question no one has asked this yet but do you talk a little bit about the the technique you mentioned it briefly about fishing out in front of the boat i mean we have a specific term for it here in michigan and it's not used as much in other parts of the country the boondog the boondog the boondog the it yeah, really so fits our water well and i boondoggles wonder, yeah yeah i think a lot of the boondoggle stuff is you know i hear it more uh steelhead guys use it right out west where you're it's a technique of fishing where you're dead drifting a dry fly in really out of a, a drift boat or a, any kind of floating vessel a raft whatever um you know we're just kind of a lot of times how we're fishing uh, on a guide trip especially is you got a whole day trip and the bugs are hatching for a couple hours right but you got to get fish in the boat you know consistently that whole time and then you're waiting for the hatch to come on so as we're uh, waiting for the bugs to actually start hatching the fish are used to seeing their cuss to seeing them so we're throwing our flies out in front of the boat and generally what we're trying to do is get these flies to match the speed of the current so the the flies are going out in front of the boat the speed of the current and then as guides or whoever's oaring the boat in the middle you're going just a little bit slower than the current you're slipping the current a little bit and the flies are out front so the the flies are the first thing the fish are going to see as you're floating down the river so it's a really sneaky presentation uh it's really productive you can get a lot of people into fish that don't necessarily have uh the you know real basis of casting right, the hot down. shot casts yeah you yeah. don't like you can throw a fly out in the front of a drift boat 30 feet casters. and catch fish yeah. all day as long as it's the first thing going down the river you're good to go what kind of leader setup do you usually use for uh with this like one that? it depends if i'm fishing this fly in the middle of the day again this is a little beefier dry fly so you can get away with a heavier tip and we're pretty lucky here um where personally i don't think our fish are horribly leader shy compared to like a western fish uh where i would I, agree uh, uh, for me like i'll always start with a seven and a half with three x and i'll go from there like i'll fish this on a three x and i would change my 
fly before I would change my tippet leader setup. I, I think that's probably around here anyway, the last thing that the fish are going to look at. A lot of times where we're at too, you have a little kind of stain to the water, so you can get away with a little heavier tippet. I almost never fish less than a 4X, I would say. I'd start at a 3 and go from there. That's For me, that's the one leader to rule them all. I mean, you can build off yeah. it. You can shrink it down. Three what, great, you're not going to need to go heavier. It's a great foundation. It is. Yeah. It's yeah. The, and question. we sell more of, the, yeah. of that than anything. I'm that's the same way. X, I can use it as a building block with the 3X. You can add 4 off of it. You can fish it as a standard 7.5 with 3X. But a lot of times I'm adding a little chunk off to get to 9 feet, and then you have a just a little working section as well. I think one thing with that parachute too, Evan, is um, you can see it. You know, A lot of times we're fishing these yeah. uh, in the evening and towards dark and you get those dark corners and you know mm -hmm. quite honestly i'm gonna fish this a lot of times right up until dark yeah until right, you, exactly you know until the clients are like i can't see my fly okay shorten it up you know and that's one thing you know how many times do you have to tell clients when you're when you're going down the river to just if you can't see the fly shorten your cast yeah it's the no fish good, aren't right. going to be spooked by that exactly right? so the closer the better um certainly in the <clears throat> waning hours of the evening but yeah that parachute's nice to see and i'll tie these um i probably have a couple in there but i'll tie the same fly and if you know that you're going to fish this in the evening you can tie this in a high vis yellow or orange or mix it in um because the fish if you tie these the right way you're not going to see that like that's for you that's for the fishermen to see what the fly is doing not the fish so the fish are going to see the wing as what we tied in the spent wing side or the hackle um this is for you to see right so one of the things i noticed when you did with that the moose tail is like scoop it up a little bit yeah and you took that ex extra right. tail wrap over there which almost makes it look like an extended body right without going through without the going through the steps right, right. so it, i like that look where i mean if you see these duns on the water almost always their tail is or their body at least is kind of curved up um, and if you tie it in just straight and that step that I took to wrap around the base of that moose body really props it up and also it flares it out where it's going to separate that tail. I, I don't think the fish are counting how many tails there are, but a lot of the mayflies have more than two or the, some have three, right? And you can really get into it. But um, like I said, they kind of see what they want to see, but that it's more than one, it looks like. It's not going to, when you fish this, it's not going to collapse on itself. No, that's a that's a really cool <clears throat> technique. Thanks for showing us that, Evan. Yeah, that's, we did that's we did have a, a question about how long have you been? Well, I'm modifying questions as I always do. How long have you been doing the just glue, not, not uh, necessarily? I lip use finish? that yeah. for me if I'm trying to tie them fast. And I know, like, I watched a little bit of Johnny Ray's video a couple weeks ago, and he talked about how, like, as guides, like you you go through a lot of flies and a lot of hooks, right? So a lot of it is functionality and then speed built in. So for me, that's a, it's not much, but it's a time saving technique where, um, and I was skeptical at first that that would even work, but it does work. And I very rarely have them fall apart if you're adding glue to the thread and just going around the post. You can do that on any standard dry. Um, this one in particular, because I, like I said, there's a lot going on right at the eye. Uh, the last thing you want to do is have one in your box where you, know, you got a fish eating and you lose a fly and you got to tie one on quick at dark and the eyes globbed up, right? So we want to make sure that eye is clear for when you need it to be clear. Uh, but yeah, I've been doing that technique for quite a while uh, and kind of was skeptical at first, like I said, but it really does uh, it does work. Um, what One other thing I did when I was starting it because I was so skeptical is I would come in um, and you can do this too with a, a bodkin after you cut that thread and you can lift this whole deal up out of the way and put a little glue on your bodkin and work a little more glue into that post and it'll it'll soak in or even if you had to drop on the, like just the very edge of your hackle mm -hmm. um, it'll kind of work down into that post and it it's not going anywhere. If you got a, a little uh, brush full of glue on that thread, it's it's locked in there. All right, we got. Do you want to ask a question? No, go ahead. I, I saw go, one there. Go right in. Okay, Hop awesome. In. Thanks so much, everybody, for using the the chat window. We got right now, Evan. We got 
40 plus people tuning in. Sick. Sick. Uh, a few people are just turn, tuning in to see the lady behind you, uh, but. Oh my Olivia <laughs> Newton John. That's my spirit my, animal. <laughs> that's Evan's spirit animal. John's the first one who, uh, who <laughs> chimed in uh, about that. Yeah, she can go and like to the store with me she's, and, uh, on an airplane. You know what? I bet she's still hot. Right? <clears throat> There's no doubt. No doubt. <laughs> You guys ever seen Grease? <laughs> <laughs> Grease is great. Uh, we did have a question from Jacob. Uh, do you have certain color dubbings that use f- that you use for different light conditions, watercolors, time of day? Yeah. Uh, you know, I'll you talked about there. mixing for some sure. things up. Uh, again, like the UV thing is huge. Like sometimes they really want that, um, and sometimes it's garbage. Like you can't throw them. So I'll tie, again, like for me, my flies that I've, found are more of a platform or a template for different bugs different but i'll tie this fly this same steps with different colors of dubbing different sizes like this is just a standard you can tie this like an adam's gray and it works great uh a little yellow with uh for sulfurs bluing olives i'll tie it too um like I said, even like brown drake sometimes, but this is just kind of a standard 12. This is how you tie it, and then you take it to where you want it to be. Wherever you're at and whatever works for you um, is great. But, yeah, that's what's great about fly tying. You can mix and match, find out what works, and go with it. But for me, it's never going to be one that you can buy in the store. So I'll mix it up. Um, like I said, I really, really like this. Um, I don't even know if they make this anymore. I don't want to show up, but this old Spirit River Matt's shaking his head already. Uh, this UV2 is really cool. Um, they might still they make might that. Still, hairline this purchase like a, nature hairline spirit. Purchase spirit. So. Yeah. yeah, so this is like a, this has a little bit more UV in it where it's almost like purple. So if you got a little, um, I like fishing the UV in the sun more than not. With that light, so this doesn't have the UV. Let's just see what it a looks little like. bit in a little my bit. in my um. Uh, the wing here has a little UV, but my body is just like plain. This one's kind of plain, where it's just the um, the beaver dubbing and then the rabbit. Where if you're doing the UV, um, that'll pop a little more. But for me, if it's bright and sunny, I like to show the fish something they can see. I like the UV in the sun because it helps reflect that. And I'll throw a darker. This is kind of opposite of what other guys will say, right? So. Um, when it's cloudy, they'll say the UV. I'm kind of the opposite. In steelhead are the same way for me. I'll go the other way where I'll go, if it's sunny, I'll go brighter. So find out what works for you. A lot of times it's just doing something different too uh, or something that other people aren't really doing. So you're basically using this this tie that you did for us this evening as a platform. Yeah. So like and whatever insect, it may fly. It's right. a template, this is right? Just like I mean, a basic, right? for me, a, a basic mayfly imitation. And you can mix up sizes, Change the color, colors. change the size. You can change it even really subtly like the hackle or the, the dubbing is a great way to do it. Obviously, that's the easiest way. But you can kind of see on this one how it's nice and clean uh, where that dubbing will really show through. So if you want to use a UV, sometimes I'll throw some... Uh, on the next one, I'll do this, but a little uh, ice dub in for the thorax, so just the front of the fly, and that'll help it pop a little bit too. But yeah, the colors, uh, they're really into that different color. You just got to find which one's working and, and go with that. Awesome. For sure. We are ready. Uh, do you need a little intermission, a little uh, no, I'm break? Whatever, man. Ready to roll? Because we can uh, roll into fly number two tonight. Bobbin's hot. You gotta go. <laughs> Bobbin's hot. <laughs> I like that. New hashtag. <laughs> Bobbin's hot. <clears throat> All hot. right, so. Uh, we have too much fun here at the Northern Angler. So right. the next one we're going to do, I'll kind of stay in that same size range, but again, just kind of um, think that you can change this to what you want it to be. I mean, this is not a set recipe by any means. My fly tying is uh, very unoriginal. It's just taking ideas from a lot of different people and putting them together. So we're going to start with, uh, well, this would be like more of an emerger type fly for the same hatch. So this would be like an the one that I would throw um, in tandem with this fly. So like a two fly rig or even by itself if I'm in uh, like this Isonicia bug hatches out of riffle water. So if I'm in a little quicker water with a little more gradient, um, I'll throw this one. This does sit a, 
a little lower in the water. Um, so it's good to fish in addition to, especially as it gets a little darker, you can throw it with a, a regular kind of parachute fly. So this is a Daiichi 1167. So this is a clink hammer hook. So you can see just by sitting in the vise how that sits. This whole, I mean, the bottom half of this fly is meant to be underneath the water. <clears throat> so we'll start here. Uh, again, we'll use the same thread because we got it spooled up, but you can use black or gray or whatever. We'll kind of start right behind the eye, and I'm just using this first little bit as a, a spacing guide. And for me, on dry flies, I'm always going to try to tie in the, the post first, and that's going to give me something to work off of um, my proportions for the rest of the fly. So I want that post to be about two-thirds forward from the barb. This hook in particular has a nice little kind of flat spot where you're going to tie on, and that's what's going to be above the water. So we're going to work back kind of to where it starts to bend and then come back forward halfway to right behind the eye of the hook. And we'll switch this one up. Um, I like to make this one a little more buoyant just because it's going to sit a little lower in the water. Um, we're going to use deer hair for the wing here. Or the post, I'm sorry. Um, so we'll take just a you know a good little clump. This is uh, white belly hair, and we'll take a good little clump. And this is more of a feel thing, right? Where you're gonna kind of feel how much it is, how much you need. And we're gonna take this in. We're just cleaning out a lot of this under fur. You can use a comb if you want, but you can kind of see there's a lot of this little straggly kind of rough fur coming out or a hair coming out of here all that stuff's going to make your fly sink so we want to get that out and get into this hollow hair and this is all really has a lot of flotation built into it so for this one i do want these tips to be straight here so i'm going to throw this in a stacker just a small clump of deer hair and a small stacker tap that a couple times and when you pull this out of the stacker, we want the tips were down as we went into the stacker. So we want those tips when we tie this in to be forward or facing out over the eye of the hook. So when we open up our stacker, we want to make sure we separate it so those tips are coming towards the eye. That way that'll save you a change of hands with this hair in it. So same thing here, we want this post to be about the length of the hook overall length of the hook about like that so this deer hair when we tie it in we want to make sure we got a, a really good grip on it so it doesn't spin around the hook like you were tying a streamer we want this all to sit right on top so we got a good pinch on it here where our threads right where we want it to go and we're just gonna do a couple good wraps loose one two getting a little tighter come around three and then we just want to pull down and that's going to flare that hair we still got it pinched really good in our left hand coming back we're going to do a couple good wraps coming back this way lock it in place i'm going to straighten all this up in a second so the trick with these <clears throat> we still got this hair pinched here we don't want to cut it off at a straight angle because it's going to add a big clump in our middle of our body that we're going to dub. So we're going to come in with our scissors and cut this at a slight angle like this. An upward angle. And that's going to taper that underbody for us. So you can see how that's wanting to spin. We're just going to tighten that down a little bit at a time. We're going to start covering up these thread wraps. So just take your time here lock this into place it spins it's okay we can bring it up back up to the top pull this back up check our spacing that looks good so we want it to be right there and this looks really uh ugly at this point but we're going to clean it all up so we're just wrapping it down Covering this up, covering up all that white, 
you got any really errant fibers we can trim those out and then we're going to do the same thing here we're going to jump our thread in front and we're going to work on posting this fly so we got this deer hair all kind of oriented up right where the point that we want it and we're going to use our thread we're going to come around up and around one tip here is to turn your bobbin right upside down and you can turn if you got a rotary vise you can angle it so that'll help you out too and we're just going to walk this thread up just like we did with those ep fibers just make sure it's a little trickier with the deer hair to keep it all bunched together but we're just walking that up the post making a little spot where we're going to wrap our hackle couple wraps and then make sure you give it a tug you want everything nice and tight here any of these really weird we can take that right out so now we're just covering up more of that white um, for me when I tie these in I know like I always have a spot like a trouble spot that gets right here on the back side of the post and like I never see it unless I think about it but that we want to make sure we come in and cover that up so that white's not going to show through when we when we're fishing it all right that's good we got that locked in Right when it starts to make that downward curve, we're going to just let our thread hang at this point. Got that wing all up and out of the way. Um, this fly, again, being a merger, we're going to tie a little uh, tailing shuck, trailing shuck on this fly. And uh, almost all, if you're looking at bugs, the shucks on them are kind of this amber, um, kind of rusty orange color. Um, and for me, I found this uh, ice fur works really good, and the color is orangutan so that's a, a good color match for any type of mayfly trailing shuck that i found but you could substitute this material like sparkle emerger yarn is really good um, basically like i said a lot of times what we're trying to accomplish here is to have the bottom half of this fly sink under the water while the top half props it up so i think where some guys get into trouble when they're tying these kind of emergers or clink hammers or whatever is if your trailing shuck is a material that floats it's going to hit the water and flop on its side so you want to avoid like an antron yarn um you know kind of things like that zelon any kind of material that'll float like this has a tendency when it gets wet to sink so it's going to help us keel that fly and orient it the right way so again, you don't want to overdo it. I just got a couple little fibers here, not much. And I'll come in. <clears throat> again, always thinking about when you're tying a dry fly is the proportions and the taper. So we got this taper kind of built in by the deer hair already. And where we want to tie this in is where the bear hook kind of meets that front taper. And that's going to continue on. I'll tie that in right on top. And then just work it down the. <coughs> just work that down the thread. Down the hook. Come back up. We'll trim off this excess. And then for our shuck, we want this just to be visible, not real long. Maybe half a, half a hook length. That's good. So our thread's hanging there. We're going to work on our body now. Uh, maybe we'll, we'll tie this one with a, this different dubbing, this little darker UV. Again, you could tie this any color. Um, I'm going to go kind of one-third dry fly dubbing to two-thirds of the rabbit, which helps it sink here. So that's going to help, again, pull that bottom fly down, bottom half of the fly down. So this is going to be a little more gray with a touch of red. And we're just, again, blending that, just pulling it, ripping it apart and stacking it back on top of itself. So this one's going to be a little more gray, but you got a little of that red that's going to show through uh, both from our dubbing and then you got the red thread. So that's going to help it too.
So we'll take our dubbing here and make a nice, again, just a real thin noodle. Work this on. I like to build the taper in myself, so my noodle's going to be, again, three, four inches uh, in length here and about the same diameter all the way through. And you can kind of see just on, just based on the how you dub that on how you're going to get little hits of that red mixed in with the with the gray as you're wrapping it forward. So we'll start here, kind of get it back to where that shuck starts. Wrap it forward again. We got the, a lot of that taper built in just by that deer uh, parachute we tied in. All right, that got me about halfway, so we're just going to stop, add a little more. Um, so I'd rather work in little increments and do it more frequently than tie a dubbing noodle that's, you know, 10 inches long and try to wrap it around and be really accurate where your thread lands. So work uh, shorter and more frequently with your adding dubbing here. That looks terrible, so we're going to take that off. Yeah, another thing. So if you get a dubbing, you try to spin it on, and it looks like shit, just take it off and re-add it. But, right? So don't, like, that's why you don't wax your thread. Just pinch and spin. You always want to pinch and spin the same direction. Don't be afraid to back it off a step and start over. Make it, you're taking the time to do this how you want to do it. Like, do it the right way. Sound like my dad. Yeah, me too, right? <laughs> shit. <laughs> That was scary. That's scary, man. You're gonna take time to do it. You better do it. You the better right do way. it the right way. Words to live by. So work that up. We're right behind the <clears throat> post now. We'll jump that thread right in front. We'll add our hackle. Uh, you could do grizzly, uh, grizzly and brown. Uh, two grizzlies. I like I said. I always had two, even if it's a solid color. This is looking a little thin, so maybe we'll go one. And we'll go with a little lighter color here, too. This is uh, a done. About the same spot, about the same size. This is what a new one looks like, where you got all these feathers to pick from. These, uh, this grizzly I have is pretty picked over, kind of in that sweet spot, that 10 to 12. So, uh, we tie a lot of flies that size, 10 to anyway. So, we'll pick out one of these, about the same size as our grizzly. This is lighter, so this is going to give it a little lighter wing, like we were talking about. These, uh, Isonychias have white, really pronounced white legs. So same thing, we'll trim off the fluff, strip that stem a little bit. That's going to give us a nice clean point to tie it in. It's a little long. We'll kind of jam this up right behind the eye. A couple good wraps. And then pull it back, shorten it up. That's going to lock it in. Then we're just going to wrap it back. And then <clears throat> secure that, kind of coming around the post again. Just securing that to the, to the post itself. Make sure that's nice and tight. Work it back down. Come right in front. Got one trapped here. <clears throat> All right, so now we got our hackle on there. We clean up this front. We'll add a little more of our dubbing here. Just real thin. We're going to cover up this thread head. Start right behind the eye, and we're going to work back. Pull it over to the other side and check and make sure you got full coverage on the back. Everything's covered up where you want it. 
and we're going to end with our thread one wrap around the post and the threads hanging on the near side of the hook we'll take our zappa gap add just a drop to that post that's again going to help our hackle kind of sit in there how we want it without blowing out and we'll just wrap this from the top down to the bottom every wrap should go underneath the previous wrap until you get down to the base and then I'll try to jam just one more in there we'll take our thread and start wrapping that around kind of coming over the hackle and then underneath Really cinch it down. A couple good wraps. We'll trim off that excess hackle there. <clears throat> you can come in and uh, glue that thread again. You could jump this behind the eye and do a whip finish on this one if you want. It's not as busy as the last one. But really, this is, like I said, I found a pretty quick and easy way to do parachutes just with that glue. Pull that up out of the way. couple good wraps Just pull it tight and then kind of let it sit for a second and that glue will seat itself in there and I come and cut it right behind the post I said you can come in and add another drop in there if you want but you don't really need to so that's your little emerger um, again same type of hatch you can change the color and size and whatever you want on this one but um, that post is going to keep it up. We got those white legs. The bottom half of this fly is meant to be underneath the water. It's going to sit just like how it sits in the vise, where the hook's going to be up. This is on top. This is beneath. The fish will see that trailing shuck in that color and be good to go. All right, we're back. Evan, that was that was really insightful. Um... <laughs> You know, everybody, no, I mean, I'm, I'm being absolutely sincere here. Um, we are getting a lot of great feedback Brutal. here. Um, <laughs> I know. We, we have a lot of sarcasm here at the North. A <laughs> little bit. And, um, so I would expect my boss, uh, who there's no way she used, she's watching, but uh, my last job before this told me I wasn't allowed to use sarcasm anymore at work. <laughs> I'd have quit. Yeah, I mean, you know, sarcasm here is expected. If you can't handle the sarcasm, you can't handle working oh here. My so um, we do have one question here um, that that we'd like to address is: What size ranges do you suggest uh, for this fly in fishing the manistee? Um, I, this is a twelve, pretty standard, right? I'll tie this in a couple different colors in the twelve. Um, I'll tie the eights more in a brown drakey or a 10, uh, I'll tie this down to a 20. And for like little blooming olives, if you really want to get aggressive, you could probably do a trico in it, but uh, I'm not really into that. So um, you could do it though. I mean, it, again, these are um, platforms. So you can tie this same steps, same materials, change the colors, change the sizes, sure. balls in your court. Yep, nice. nice. I'm gonna throw you a random, what's your favorite hatch to fish? Uh, Personally, uh, not necessarily as a guide. Up to you. I mean, the uh, fall bead hatch on the lower man. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the easiest one to good tie one. for. Too. That's you probably know, my like favorite. those. Those are pretty easy to tie right there. The beads. Uh, uh, pick yeah, a color. But dry flies, man. They're all cool. As long as I can see the fish eating them, I'm into it, man. That's all. They're all good. But yeah. The, uh, this one's pretty cool. The ISOs, they last a long time. The fish really like them. Uh, they don't get too picky with them, and that's probably my favorite. And you can see it. like It's cool because you get big fish coming up to eat them. It's not in the middle of the night. And you like, can fish this away. right into August. Yeah, there's here. a late, I mean, um, late ISO hatch in the fall. They're a little more olive colored, than the, so I would mix like olive where there's red. I would use olive, and that works great too. But same, little, maybe a touch smaller, but not much. Right, right. Hey, do you do you have time? Do you want to do one more? I can if you'd like me to. So this is kind of like a guide's choice here. You can decide what you yeah. want to do. What 
up what, to you entirely. This is entirely like just free form. We haven't really. So if you want to do some bead rigs. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah those are some that's rigs. my jam. <laughs> that's my jam. That and yarn. I love yarn. Um, I can do another. I got stuff for another little, uh, just real quick. Uh, fly that we use a lot. Uh, no it's rush. Just a no rush. Standard. Just the chubby Chernobyl, like I tie it a little differently than. Oh, I'd love to see that because uh, that you were always catching more efficient than I was last summer, and and maybe it's the chubby Chernobyl. Yeah, so it's just a little uh, again foam fly hopper ish thing that works really good over there. They look at it, I think, like a stone fly a lot of times, more than a grasshopper, but they'll take it like a grasshopper or whatever. I'm. Mean, and this fly, we're going to tie with a, a good bit of foam on it. Um, so you can move it around, skitter it on top, dead drift it. It'll hold a nymph up if you want to hit a dropper off of it. And it looks like you're using fire hole sticks Yeah, there. so oh, these yeah. fire hole sticks, uh, we just are getting them in the store now. Um, I really yes. like this hook for um, my foam flies. This is a... 618 again just a size 12 this is a foam nymph hook you could this is light enough where you could probably tie those dry flies on it too because there's enough flotation in there um what i like about this fly compared to some of the other ones we have with this foam i can tie smaller foam flies and still have the a good gap or a good space in between the the shank of the hook and where the point is so this has a two extra uh long spacing here compared to a standard dry fly hook so um a lot of times we were kind of struggling with getting a lot of bites in this size range of hopper or stone fly whatever foam fly um but you wouldn't get the hookups with clients so this hook has really helped me yeah that 52 get, 12 is pretty light wire yeah too. a lot it's, like the tampa hooks are really good they're great they're for good. just they're a sharp. standard dry fly but it, when you start tying foam on here it's a mouthful for a fish it, a little brook trout or whatever um they have a hard time getting the hook itself into them as you set the hook so this helps a lot this extra spacing um i found is a kind of a game changer for us around here um so just a standard hook here uh two it's a fire hole 618 size 12 that's a foam nymph hook it's also extra long it's twice as long as the standard and twice a, twice the gap i'm just going to switch the thread here real quick to a black because we're going to tie a darker fly <clears throat> uh one thing i found with foam if you're tying a good bit of foam flies that it is it helps to have a flat thread so um, these Vivas threads are really good. Unithread, if you pull on it too hard, it'll tend to slice through the foam. Which Vivas? Uh, this is just a, I don't know, ADOT. ADOT? ADOT's good. doesn't okay. have to be too heavy. Um, UTC works really good, too. Like in a oh. 140, I'll use that most of the time. I kind of just changed over to this uh, Vivas. We've sold a lot of that Vivas at the shop. It's, That's good. It's really strong. It's really strong. ADOT, it's really ADOT's is. more like a 6 out. It is, yeah kind of like the maxima of, <laughs> saw, uh, it is the maxima of tying threads. threads if you've been to flies at the franklin you've seen russ uh do <laughs> bucktail with six yeah. which is, yeah you can I jam mean, on you can stuff. really silly, jam on that stuff it's silly amazing. for what it is so uh so just with this standard chubby here we're gonna go just a night we want to lay down a thread base first kind of up to back start right behind the eye do 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 these are dubbing. Uh, I'll tie this one at Peacock. So this is uh, the dubbing I like to use for this is um, an emergence dubbing. This is by Nature Spirit. Um, traditionally, I think they're tied with ice dub. Uh, that works really good, too. It kind of gets a little hard to work with, I'd say, when you're dubbing a body. Um, and this is, you kind of get the same colorations as ice dub, but it's a little easier to work with, and it's going to help you float it a little better. Um, so I'll use this dubbing if I'm really looking to load it down with like a, a beadhead nymph or uh, if you're using like a real heavy tungsten nymph. Um, instead of the ice dub, just this little bit helps. So this is, like I talked about on the last fly, not using an Antron yarn for the shuck because it floats. This is a, a tri-lobal Antron dubbing. So this is an emergence dubbing. 
and this is just a peacock green you can again use any color i bet i tie these in 40 different colors for the and then like one of them always works you just got to find out which color works change the legs change the dubbing but one of them will work so same deal here we'll start with just a little bit of this emergence dubbing and we'll dub this on just working in little bits at a time just want to make sure you're always spinning pinching and spinning your fingers the same direction Another thing that I used to see when I was doing my classes a lot was people would go like this, like a seesaw, and it, you're just putting it on and taking it back off when you're using that with your fingers. So when you're dubbing, just kind of spin it the same direction all the time. Isn't that a uh, boy band, One Direction, I think? You tell me. <laughs> <laughs> You talking about new kids? New kids on the block, man. New kids on the block. I don't know. You're old, oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I like Olivia Newton-John, obviously. <laughs> all right. You're so you brought in Oklahoma yeah. and all sorts of weird <laughs> stuff today. So we got our dub just underbody here. Uh, we're gonna jump this thread. So it's this is a barbless hook. So I would say it's where the barb would be on a traditional hook. Um, I like to use two millimeter foam for this fly um, and then I'll double it up. So I'm a lot of times mixing colors together with the foam as well as the dubbing. This is a black and a gray kind of sandwiched on top of itself. Um, what you can do is get um, just any, a lot of times it comes standard in two millimeter and then I'll get these big sheets of it like this and just kind of glue them on top of each other if I know I'm going to use it for this fly. So you can kind of see that cross section that's uh, brown and black. So when you're gluing these together, they make, uh, like 3M makes a spray. It's an adhesive spray. It's for foam in particular. So you just spray it and then sandwich them together and they're stuck. So it's a lot easier to work with than two separate pieces. You're getting the desired look, but with one working piece. Um, this one I did earlier. So it's black and gray. Uh, we'll do the black on the bottom on this one. So what we want to do is take our foam and we want to cut it. So this is already pre-sized, but again, we want to use the hook as a measurement where we're going to use the shank down to the barb. So that's kind of how wide we want our foam to be. If you're going to eyeball it when you're cutting sheets of it like that, cut it about that size. So the shank to the gap. Um, and like anything really in nature doesn't have a squared off end. So we're going to cut that. This is going to hang out the back. So we're going to cut it in a little, just a triangle. You can use one of those cutters if you want. They work great. Um, <clears throat> but just breaking it up like that's fine. It doesn't even have to be even. Uh, so just like the dry flies with this, when you're working with foam and has a tendency to spin around the hook, I found this, uh, the z mat works the best. With foam, the standard Zappa Gap, if you get the brush on, will melt the foam as it comes into the fly. This uh, is made for fly tying in particular, so it's not going to melt your foam, and it's not going to melt. We're going to tie a lot of rubber legs in here, and if the rubber legs hit it, it's not going to melt them also. So we're just going to add a nice kind of just a dab right on top, and that's where we're going to set our first section. we got the black down here. We're going to let that triangle hang out the back just a little bit. And then we're going to lock it in place right on top. You'll feel that glue kind of grab to just a couple wraps. Two, four, just right on top. You want to make sure that's good and centered. <clears throat> and you can see once that glue sets, this foam isn't going to want to turn around that hook as we're working, as we're tying this fly. We're going to tie in a couple things right in the same spot. So that glue helps me set that foam without having to wrap my thread around there 75 times to get it to set. And then you don't have a giant bulk build up there. Okay, so first thing on this little section is we're going to add our wing. Uh, I'll use that same stuff, those EP fibers. This one's a little darker. You could use the, the white. The white's good. 
Uh, this kind of color scheme, I want it to be a little darker, so I'm going to add the gray. So we have a little chunk of the gray, um, and this is roughly the same amount you'd use to tie a, a post for a, a regular dry fly in. And we're going to lay this right on top so that the fibers extend just past the just past the foam. It's going to be our back wing. I'm going to take this one easy wrap and then a little tighter, and then just pull down, cinch it in place, and that's going to flare it. And we're gonna take this long piece. Again, we're not wasting a lot of material here. If you just you already measured this half, so you use that as a gauge and just cut that the same. <clears throat> Set that aside. We're gonna use it again in a second. So we're gonna pull this wing back and we're gonna take a couple more wraps right in front. We're in that same gap that we created there with the in the foam itself. Just a couple wraps. And then this one we're gonna come back. These have a tendency, if you don't secure them properly, to pull out when you hook a fish or if you're getting the hook out. So we're just going to pull on this foam a little bit and drop a bit of glue right on those thread wraps on top of the wing. And that's going to lock it in place. That fly will not come apart. Dirt. Don't panic. A couple wraps right there. You're good to go. That wing's not going anywhere. That'll all, as it sets, tighten up and be ready to rock and roll. So this one we're going to use a little, uh, whatever kind of legs you want. Some of the legs you can get, have a little of the, if a, the UV is something you're looking for, you can add it to this fly. You're not going to ever going to get it with the foam, but you can add it with your dubbing. And then again with the, like the legs, like these will have like a UV property to them. This is a clear UV kind of black and white spec or clear UV pearl. Um, and then I really like on this darker kind of peacock black one, this, uh, these aren't, this would be a non UV one, but you would use like this black kind of speckled green chrome work. So it kind of matches that peacock, but you can tie them however you want. I'll tie them a lot of times with one set of legs, one color and one set of different color. Just whatever you're kind of feeling, the fish will eat it. So we'll do one of these legs. Kind of take this, trim one out. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make a like a loop here. So you're going to even it up. I'm not going to cut it yet. <clears throat> so you got a little loop here. We're going to tie this in as one on the near side. Same spot, two wraps. Okay, then you got your loop. Everything's all tied in like this. And we're just going to come in and cut that now. And then there'll be a set that's on top and a set that's on the bottom. The set that's on the top, we're just going to draw that over to this near side. Kind of pull it in place to where you want it. And then pull this one on this side. So you want those legs to sit kind of even with where that foam is. And if you break one off, don't worry. You just add it back in. So one on the near side, one on the far side. Couple wraps of thread. We want those to kind of X out, flare out. And then what we're going to do is take our dubbing and we're going to cover that step with dubbing and then work it forward. So we're going to come right through there. Make sure you don't trap your legs. We're going to come in between the legs for a couple wraps and then start working it forward. You can use that rotary function on your vise if you have one. Pull this all back and then just kind of work this thread, the dubbing forward. You're going to stop 
a couple eye lengths behind the eye of the hook. And we're going to come in, add a little bit of this glue again right on top where we're going to tie it down. And then bring that thread, bring that foam forward. One thing you don't want to do is pull it really tight and stretch it. If we can get a little hump in there, that's going to help it float. A little air bubble almost. So we're just going to lay it on top, pull it down, give our segments to the body. A couple wraps. If these legs are bugging you, you can kind of trim them a little bit. Get them in your way. Okay, then we're just going to repeat what we did on the back. Start with that gray wing. We're going to match this up. Same length as our previous back wing. Come right in that gap. One, two, pull down. Fold this back. Cut it all the same length. Make sure that's locked in. We can take our glue. Drop a little bit of glue right in there in that little space. You can see that. We'll do a wrap or two. So big fan of the Z-Mint. Um, kind of use it in a lot of my flies. There's nothing that I hate more than one coming apart when a fish eats it or you're getting it out of a fish. So <clears throat> that helps a lot with that. Uh, so now we got our wing in. Just one more set of legs here. We can tie this in. Is that clear? one on the far side kind of lay it nice and flat one on the near side everything's coming through the same gapping there the legs and everything kind of you can manipulate those pull them where you want them to be that looks good just a little more dubbing to cover up our steps and then this one couple good wraps there covering up our work jump in front uh, this one I will use a whip finish on just because we have the space I kind of pull this up and out of the way one two three we'll do a three turn and then another one two three that out so this is all kind of different lengths and stuff right now I'll take a pair I like these little bit longer scissors and I'll draw all this material up and kind of pinch my fingers right where the foam is and then just like uh, how when you get your haircut at the barbershop I'll use my finger as a guide and trim this all right on top of my fingers so it's the same length so your parachutes like that and your legs are now all the same length if you want your front ones a little shorter you can pull them forward and trim them a bit shorter the top on that you can come in <clears throat> and just whack those uh corners off of that front foam and you're ready to rock and roll i like to leave the front of this one up a little bit so that's why I tie it back a little further. That helps me um, with flotation. And if I want to have a client kind of move it on top, that'll act almost like a popper where you can kind of kick it and it'll kick a little water. I don't know if you guys ever have actually seen a grasshopper or a stonefly on the water, but they're, they're moving. Like you can, you can wiggle this around. It's not going under the water. So it's got that little green underneath. Again, you can change the color, size, whatever you want, but... That's a pretty good kind of late summer. Um, I throw this one on sunny days too. That little darker profile here, I think they can see it. If you got a sun that's right over top, kind of midday sun, and that's casting a shadow down to the fish, like they'll see that darker profile, um, in particular with the black, black legs. So this would be kind of late summer, dark fly on a sunny day scenario. Um, but again, you got a little, if you tie it with the white legs, you get a little bit of that UV into. So that's it. That's all I got. All right. Well, you know, Evan, that was a that's that's a great fly right there. That's a uh, yeah. I know you, we tie we catch a lot of fish yes. on these. You know, it's kind of like the 
Yeah, I think that's kind of a modern version of what I would call the Michigan skunk, you know, dry. Yeah, that kind right? of black and I mean, white that color. Black and white yeah. and, and, the, and the foam, so it's it's really client-friendly, so they mm-hmm. can, it'll float, right? Can't sink it, man. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen it try. A lot of people try. <laughs> Whack! <laughs> Why is my fly sinking? <laughs> Let me... Uh... <clears throat> Must have tied it wrong. Uh, exactly. We got a few questions to answer. Uh, I did see one about, uh, well... This is a compliment, actually. You make uh, tying parachutes look very easy, says Rob. Uh, he usually sticks to streamers because uh, yeah. that's what he can see. Sure, uh, for sure. And I was the same way. I started out tying steelhead bugs first and then got, like, that was really cool. I caught a fish on a fly tied, right? And then you go to streamers, and, like, that's really cool, and they're easy to tie because they're big, right? And then so my tip would be if you want to start tying dry flies, start with bigger dry flies and then just work your way down it's a lot of the same mechanics and movements um and it just adds to like if you're fishing trout in the summer it's, it's still really cool it's just like catching the fish on a streamer like you sat down and spent the time to tie the fly that caught the fish and it's just another uh added dimension to the experience i guess so um really cool i'd stick with it man just give it a shot they don't they don't have to be pretty to catch fish man i'm not putting these in the bins and selling them so no. like th- these aren't perfect by any means but they, they work and that's that's really good advice we're lucky in michigan to have big enough bugs where you can tie these yeah. big flies right. i see a lot of <clears throat> i do see a fair amount of folks that i think may be a mistake they grab that that hatch chart and it becomes infallible. Like, I need a box full of blue-winged olives that are size 20. Right. And that's where they start for their, their yeah. year of tying. And it's so Skip it, man. Start with rough. the hex bug. Or brown yeah, gray, work backwards. ISOs, like, yeah. start big because those small. are the bugs we never seem to have enough of. Right. I mean, isos never have enough of. Sulfurs work up to sulfurs. And they right. last like longer that. than yeah. those early hatches yeah, yeah, anyway. Exactly. And, the, and the thing of it is, really, our fish in Michigan... Um, you know they don't care, they don't care about like, like you could throw big ones caddis. on big they tippets. don't care about <laughs> little bugs like yeah occasionally yeah. they'll eat them but if you start with the bigger bugs that's that's what you're going to find your success on and and your approach on these Evan on all your dry flies are you know it's it's kind of streamer like approach yeah you're right? you know people them. are 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 really i think intimidated by tying dry flies yeah yeah you know big the time. expense of big the hackle time. and this and that but you know Guys, you really don't have to spend a lot of money yeah, on hackle when you're tying you, parachutes. Really good hackle, like a pro grade, and it doesn't even have to be like cream of the crop hackle. Like no. this is a pro grade neck. It probably costs forty dollars. I tie thousands of flies for my, you know, over the. I probably had this for years. Yeah. And like it's picked through, Absolutely. like the sizes I use are right. See, like that's a ten and a twelve. That's yep. what I tie. And the that's what's great about those here. pro grades. They're sized. Yeah. They're you're not the highest, the super high quality, but the size is right for Michigan. Right, exactly. That's a sweet spot for a lot of our bugs. And like I said, if you're tying parachutes, you want the hackle bigger anyway. So you don't need these itty bitty midge saddles and stuff like that. Like get the bigger ones and like air bigger. And then they're easier to tie too. Right. Oh, we had, we did have a question from Joe, uh, whose microphone we're using. So thanks, thanks again, Joe. Joe. Uh, always fun to see you stop in after school. Uh, he was asking if you've had any issues with larger Chernobyls lately, or you know, what have you noticed in terms of size preference for Chernobyl style flies lately? I would say it depends on what you're trying to do. I mean, if you're looking for a big one, like a big fish, you should throw a big fly, and you're and it's then it's streamer fishing with a dry fly. I um, agree. So the bigger, you know, if a lot of the Western stuff is sized accordingly to their their grasshoppers are bigger ours are smaller so our fish are used to seeing stuff that's more of like this is a decent i'd say this is mid-size uh so it's a size 12 hook it's extra long but still a size 12 hook you got a little foam hanging off of each end this i'd call mid-size i'll tie this down to a 16 on that same hook for the itty bitty ones if it's later in the season and i'm looking more for or if you have a beginner or if you're looking for bites, like I, I want to get more opportunities instead of concentrating on 
catching a, a really good one or a big one. Uh, maybe like it's an ant or something. Yeah, like and then you're going right? an ant, any kind of terrestrial beetle, whatever, and you can change those colors accordingly. But a lot of times with this, I think it's the size and the profile. So the big ones are great, but you're certainly going to limit your numbers with with the bigger fly, right. with the bigger. Yeah, if hopper, you're going for numbers, that time those of year. little hoppers. And it's, it's the same thing with same streamers or whatever, right? Yeah. So yeah. If Absolutely. you're looking same for the stream. one, throw a big one in yeah. a wood pile like you would a streamer. But, but you need to be. You, you need to be accept okay. that you're yeah. going to throw a big fly all day yeah. and maybe see catching one fish. Lot, probably right. catching a couple less Absolutely. fish. Absolutely. Really, so. That's a that's the trade-off you need to handle. So uh, we did have a question about, uh, as usual, I'm modifying some questions. One, do you fish a two-fly dry fly setup a lot? Go, kind of going back to that yeah. merger yeah, where it's I a dry um, and a merger. If you can cast one without – tangling it and i would say like for me it's three strikes and you're out kind of scenario in my boat like i'll give everybody gets a chance but not everybody gets to do it for the i can totally see evan as an umpire Um, absolutely so yeah i would like if i was going fishing i'd run two's better than one man you'd run a uh dry and a dropper a lot our fish don't key in on droppers as much right we're more right surface oriented on our fish especially when the hatches are going on so if i can double my chances by adding two flies without the headache of getting tangles then yeah i'm running two all the time and i'm I'm always going to run either i'm never going to run the same fly twice two in a row i'll run one at the very least it's the same fly but a different size or i'll run a different phase in the life cycle of the fly so i'll run a lot of times those first two flies i can run those in a tandem in particular later in the evening where that back one that emerger for me i'll be fishing that maybe a little tighter uh in the wood it's maybe a little darker in that area but i can use that point fly like an indicator if it goes under it's one on the back one on a soft eat or whatever so yeah i run two a lot let's see uh what else we get? Uh, we did have a question about your your vice and base, what you're using tonight. My personal life? Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. yeah. Uh, so this is a Ranzetti Traveler. It's probably 20 years old. Uh, you can't you can't beat it, man. I don't know. For the money and the jaws, same original jaws and everything. This base is, um, I don't know. Where do we get these? We tried to know. find we, that. We tried, looked whatever. forever. We even we have a pile them. of granite. We have a pile of granite to make these in the yeah, back. Yeah, so, so we, we're trying to remake like them. But, uh, have we even granite. heard from Dougie? The, no. Has anyone seen Dougie no. in a year? Who's Dougie? Dougie well, he the was, ghost, I know. No, I know. No, he was trying to machine I, the yes, bases for Yeah, so we're trying to get the bases. is just granite, and then it's got a hole drilled in it. The trouble is finding the bushings and getting them fit in there and epoxied yeah, so the they riser, stay. Yeah. But uh, I've had this since uh, we had a couple left over from when Brian uh, took over the store from when it was down the street. And that's when I got this. So it's it's old, but they're hard to find. They are. If you could find one, get a bunch. Yep. So we're trying to make them. them yeah, but we're trying to remake them. It's, it's great. It doesn't it's a long move. Process. You can it's... still travel around with it. It's awesome. It's sturdy. It doesn't wiggle. Um it's the best thing I've found to a C clamp vice when you're moving around. Yeah. Nice. Nice. So how's your hockey season going, Evan? Like, no season. Corona. No season. No, corona. corona. Got a little uh, high corona. Built up energy, I think. So. You see that, right? I mean, you're, you're a little yeah. tense. How, how many, how many times are you these? normally Goodness. skating this time of year? Oh, a couple of days a week, I yeah. don't know, at least. Oh, it's got to be rough. I mean, chasing kids has to be some workout, right? No, I mean, <laughs> we'll see. Sometimes. <laughs> oh. oh, Nash and June. Oh, They're yeah. awesome. Nash is now, oh, what is it? A, he's uh, going to be a, a Navy, Navy SEAL, SEAL yeah, at this Navy point. He's working oh. on his yep. swim training right now. <laughs> so, That's yeah, super Navy awesome. Seal. Snorkel <laughs> class today. Snorkel so. class. I love yeah. it. Oh, yeah. okay. fantastic. Well, thanks, Evan. We yeah. really appreciate it, man. Really Thank appreciate you so much. having me, Big guys. Uh, any questions, just shoot them to the shop. I'll be yeah. happy to answer Leave them. Leave comments whatever, below if you, have more, uh, if you watch it more later. Questions. Um, yeah, let us know. We'll be here to help you. Next week, tune in for our friend Tommy Green. He's going to be tying some big pike tube flies for, uh, well, for pike, obviously. Cool. Just really yeah, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, big stuff. Kind of cool. He sources some things from beyond the normal fly tying world which is 
kind of cool. Dimension. So you, yeah, well, not well if you count Take Ace Hardware. Take me to your leader. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Since this That's is what... getting weird, thank you everyone uh, for tuning in tonight. If you haven't subscribed yet, think about doing so <clears> that uh, <throat> you'll know when we post new videos. Hit the thumbs up if this has been helpful. It helps other people find these. And check Evan out at Captain Evan on Instagram, I believe. Oh, you, I don't uh, know, it's man. been a little while. I'm not a uh, social media guy. Well, so. if we went fishing, maybe I'd take some pictures. For uh, yeah, well, I don't Come have on. a photographer like uh, Brian. Does, I guess, so. <laughs> what? Personal photographer. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Yeah. Well, yeah. Can we yeah, in the I'm shop? There. Whatever. Take Come some on. glamour Come shots for I'm you. Around. Just like, uh, what's her face? Olivia. 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 Olivia Newton John. Check out pull that poster down, Evan. Yeah. Hold that What's up. What's the everyone. hashtag for the the week? I don't know. Is it this uh, is Bobbin's like, hot? Oh Bobbin's my hot. gosh, the Bobbin's hot. hot. hot Oli Bobbins. Olivia might be the one. But I mean, this, Olivia, so. when I I mean, gosh, what how old was I when this like I was cleaning out my basement and this is like this was a centerfold. Side close. one, side two. Side one, <laughs> side two. This was like what what's on there? Xanadu physical, and Let's Xanadu. get physical. I mean, dude, open oh, that, you're the open the that center fold yeah, up. Uh, open the center fold up. Grease. Like, you're this is a grease hole thing. Yeah. If you're still with us at this point, you Wait, know no. what? You should win some sort of a. Oh, oh gosh. So, I mean, that's better this is than graphic. Playboy. If you're a that kid, that is way you know, better than Playboy off, to me right, right now. It's, <laughs> that is so hot. Parental warning. I wonder why I have like a affection for older women at this point. Huh. With that, maybe we just. We'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.